Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 26, 2017 edition of the Santa Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from New York City, New York. Now, we have expected this for a while now, but Adobe did officially announce the end of support for Flash. You will see support for Flash through 2020, so for another three years, at which point you will no longer see any updates for Flash plugins. This is a coordinated effort with Google, Microsoft, on and Mozilla. These companies had included Flash players in their browsers. Facebook and Apple will also participate in this effort. Now, Apple hasn't shipped Flash as part of its operating system for a while now. Facebook, of course, had Flash games, which also will no longer support it as of 2020. Adobe points to the increasing adoption of open standards like HTML5 and of course Adobe's own creative tools have supported and have gravitated towards these open standards for a few years now. And Salesforce released an interesting tool to make it easier to profile SSL clients. Now, I've talked about this in the past. Cisco, for example, did some work on this where you identify SSL connections established by malware by looking at subtle differences in how the SSL handshake works. Oftentimes, malware doesn't enable all the options that you find in SL connections established by, for example, normal browsers. So by looking for missing options, odd ciphers and the like, you're sometimes able to identify these malicious connections. So far, the technique was well known, but wasn't easy to implement. Salesforce now released a tool that it calls JA3. This tool will create a hexadecimal fingerprint for SSL connections, essentially looking at all of these different options, ciphers and the like, and calculate a hash over these options. I haven't had a chance to run the tool yet, uh, but it looks quite promising. They're providing scripts for Pro and Python, so you can plug it right into Pro if you're using that for your network security management. Also, Moloch and uh, Trisol NSM, two other tools that can be used to collect traffic, have plugins for JA3. The readme file found on GitHub has a number of examples, for example, how these hashes look like for torque lines, the dire malware family, and also for Metasploit's Merterpreter running on Linux. JA3 does not consider the certificate or ports or IP addresses, so really just focuses on these client hello messages and they are already enumerated 400 or over 400 different JA3s for different applications. The database has also been published. A few years ago, when Apple introduced the Find My iPhone function, it was a very welcome change in order to be able to lock your iPhone remotely if it has gotten lost and possibly stolen. Since then, Apple also expanded this feature to its laptops, desktops that run OS X and Mac OS. But in the past, this feature has also been abused. And German news site HiC.de is reporting about yet another wave of attacks that take advantage of this feature. The attack essentially holds the device ransom, but not via malware, so there is no ransom bear involved. Instead, all the attacker does is guess the user's iCloud password, log into iCloud, and then lock the devices remotely. When you lock a device remotely, you can also display a message to a user, and this message will then, of course, display the ransom demand. Now, it's not really clear how the attackers are gaining access to the passwords, but it can be assumed that they probably are reusing username and password combinations they found elsewhere or maybe also the result of phishing attacks are used to launch this attack. 
If you're running iOS, then recovering is not all that difficult. All you need is you need to overwrite the lockout screen with your current device password. Now on OS X and Mac OS, this is a little bit more difficult. This feature is actually implemented in firmware and quite secure, which would be a good thing until someone else does it for you. And the only way to recover appears to be the Apple Store. To defend against these type of hacks, you need to set a strong password for your iCloud account and of course, if possible, secure it via two-factor authentication. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.